Okay, so hey, new week, new episode. This time we are trying to uh, route the the power con the power cables for um, new electronics that it was not on the on the boat originally. Um, I have. This little guy here, this is a Raspberry Pi with a canvas hat that have Nemia 2000 connection and this will be my backup everything, my backup navigation, backup um, sensors, display, everything is in this one. Uh, really simple to program, uh, really nice, like $200 maybe of worth of um, technology in here was just like you know the Raspberry Pi the canvas was another hundred dollars and maybe the case was like twelve dollars or something like that uh, it's really simple to to set up um, I will try to put some links on the video description so you can follow if you want um, this is really nice because essentially you have a chart plotter you have a multi display you can connect everything to internet you can send all of the messages from your from your boat directly through uh, your application on your, on your cell phone or you can use telegram to send those informations outside to the world it's really nice really simple to do and my idea so what I'm doing here is essentially let me give you a little bit of light okay here you go right so the boat have this here this goes this this is not part of the of the system this will be take it out so this one will be inside here okay it will be inside here and from here I have a mini HDMI cable that will be fitted directly to the screen that, that goes in here so essentially I will have everything uh, visible here the other thing is that I need a USB on this side of the panel so I can uh, connect the tablet that will be the screen uh, display that tablet I'm not connected the tablet directly to the to the Raspberry Pi one because you can't and second because I want the tablet to be mobile of course so maybe for example if I go to sleep I just I just take the tablet with me to the front cabin and I have all the information everything death uh, depth movement uh, wind wind speed alarms everything will be on the on the front cabin or I can take it with me whatever so I already rooted one cable which is my homemade cable routing system <laughs> and I just need to attach the real cable to it and then pull it out all the way through here all this way and connect it to the electrical panel that will give me power here then I will use this that I bought on Amazon is a simple uh, USB, two USBs. Maybe I can show it to you. Well, I will show you later, but I will use this. That will give me two USBs, one for the Raspberry Pi and one for the tablet that goes outside. And yeah, that will give me that. And I'm waiting for um, the guy from the La Casa de la Electronica, great guy. And I'm waiting for him that he will bring me some uh, an NEMIA 2000 cable so I can finish routing the cables today. That will give me... Uh, then the blonde is coming today. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the other day, but I still work... I, I don't work anymore, so this is my work now. Just getting the, the boat ready. But the blonde is still working. So she went back the 2nd of January uh, home to work and everything. And she's coming back today with a lot of the things that we ordered from from internet, the pieces that I still need. And she will stay for the weekend, and we will, you know, keep doing work and everything else. So, yeah, let's go to it. Let's start to it, um, and see you guys after the routing.
Okay. USBs connected as you saw. And um, yeah, let's wait. Let's see if we can power our power up this. Um, just need a USB to USB C cable. Um, which I have. <laughs> I know that I have. Um, let me take one of this. Uh, one or the other is the same. Let's go with this. And look down a little bit, you guys. So this goes in here. Okay. That's connected to instruments. So it shouldn't start immediately because it should start only when I turn on all the instruments on the boat. So this goes here, no lead. Let's see what happens when I actually turn on the instruments and absolutely nothing. Hmm. What did I did wrong? For sure I did something wrong. Let me just be sure it's not the cable. You know? Let's be sure it's not because of the cable itself. This goes here. Okay, so it's not the cable. This is not the switch. What did I did wrong? <sighs> Let me think. Okay, let's try to find it out together. Let me bring you guys with me. So, well, let's do one thing. Let's debug from here all the way back to, to the connection and let's see if we can find where the problem is. So, first of all, okay, that was not supposed to happen. So I will try connecting these cables directly and see if it's not because of these electrical connections. No, have nothing to do with electrical connections. So let me re-put that there that there and yeah let's see where the problem might be need this one here so I need because I need it so I can see if I can fix it and let's see let's try to understand where the problem might be is connected that's connected there's really no much other places where the problem can be maybe it's that red connector is faulty can be found it uh, since this is, you know the, the Murphy laws? Well, there's a lot of that going on in a boat. So, <laughs> this guy here, this connector has a flat thing inside that goes inside, inside the other piece and essentially make connection. That flat thing was bent up so the, connection, the connector was sliding under it instead of inside it. But, Anyhow, now we have power on the USB, which means we have a working Raspberry Pi on the system. I just need to put, tug everything, cost it look. How is it said in English? It's uh, costly, costly, you are cozy, cozy. We need to put, well, anyhow, I need to put anything, everything inside there and but now I have the two USB, so that's done. Uh, the good thing is that now I know how to route cables uh, there. 
which I didn't actually knew how. So essentially they go like this, go like that, then go inside there, but it's not inside here. It will go under the table and then back up again inside here. So it's a little bit convoluted, but it works. So this cable is done. Um, then I realized yesterday I routed another cable exactly the same, like this one, that goes all the way in front there, where I will put another USB, just, you know, for charging and use. And so I will go ahead and connect this to the LED lights. So this will be part of the general uh, plugs and uh, of the of the of the boat. So when I turn on lights and plugs, everything goes up. So this needs to be connected. Okay. So the Raspberry Pi is there. Wait, let me show you. Is inside there. Okay. And let me show you what I was talking about, the Raspberry Pi being the backup of the of the webs of the navigation system, but pretty much every system in the on the on this boat. So um, the one thing, let me do it like this. What you need to do is once you have your Raspberry Pi set up, um, it should display here it is, a PI uh, Wi-Fi. Connecting to that PI Wi-Fi should give me the possibility to do this. Nope. Wait, what am I doing wrong? Um, ten. Ah, sorry, here it is. Boom. Signal K, is com this is coming directly from the from inside the Raspberry Pi. And in web apps, I should have instrument panel. And there you go. So right now, you don't see any data because I don't have the, the Nimia 2000 connected. And also the only sensor right now connected is the, is the depth sensor. Depth sensor. Depth sensor? Yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> Um, that's the only one connected. I still need to connect everything else, but the idea what I want to do is to have everything on the Nimia 2000 network going direct, going to also, not directly, but to the Raspberry Pi 2. And from there, uh, redistribute that information where I need it. So I can have it on the tablet that goes right there. I can have, I can move the tablet around. I can have it on my cell phone. I can have it. Uh, I can even send this to my my family uh, and the Blunt's family, a short, so they can see the boat. They can see how it's, you know everything is going. Um, also, what I'm doing is that I'm using Red Note, one of the systems inside, well, one of the plugins that you can use on Raspberry Pi, to then do if this then that kind of notif notifications and like water on the bilge or dragging of the anchor or moving the boat, speed of the boat, speed of wind speed, all that kind of things will become uh, notifications that we receive and our families receive. So if we are, you know, somewhere around the world and we are, you know, leaving the boat because we are going to explore with the dinghy or something like that, we can have, we will have access to all the data of the of the boat and the boat can, can communicate with us at any time. So if we are out exploring and you know, maybe it will take the whole day out, um, I can be, you know, in peace, rest assured that there's no water on the bilge, that the boat is not dragging, um, that the wind is not picking up out of nowhere and the boat is alone somewhere getting 45 50 knots of wind or whatever so that that's why and, and of course that doesn't substitute the the chart plotter and, and everything else but it's a really nice things to to have it costs virtually nothing and it have the, the the possibility also to be a backup um i think i can show you guys that uh just one a second again not everything's been connected yet, so there's a still um, there's nothing to see there. But I think I can show you that 
if I go here, so let me, I don't know if you guys can see my screen actually, but if I go here and go on BNC and I will never show you my password. Wait. Okay, so this is the inside of the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi have OpenCPN. Well, I installed the version with OpenCPN. It's a very rudimental, basic chart plotter, but it is a chart plotter that accepts maps from CMAP and stuff like that. So I will connect the, the GPS antenna. I will connect it through any um, Nimia 2000, Speedboat, GPS, everything. And this double downs as a chart plotter. So if at any point, in any moment, something happens that the chart plotters start working and maybe we are in the middle of nowhere in the ocean or we are in the middle of nowhere, like in an island really remote and there is no way for us to get a new chart plotter or having, or, you know, having it cheap, cheap from, cheap it from uh, Europe or where our, our families are is way too expensive we can use this as chart plotter navigation system until we get to a point where it makes more sense to substitute the one that broke. So I'm really happy with this. Um, I'm a big sh shout out to the guy uh, on Y2K channel. I will put the link on, on the description. He, that's how I discovered this and the guy has an amazing tutorial on how to install and everything. I didn't use the board, the Enemia board that he recommends. Um, I will put the links to the ones I found, uh, simply because the one that he used uh, have, you need to connect the cables to like a board. And the one that I found is a, is a, is a canvas with already micro, micro C um, connection. So you don't need to do any of that, which is simpler. Um, I think it costs the, the same. So that's all. Good morning. So today looks like Christmas, not because it's Christmas, because we actually paid for all of this. But the the blonde came back from home. You know that she's still working, so she's not staying in the boat with me at the moment. But she came back for the weekend and she brought all of the goodies I ordered. And what I mean with that is an entire Victron Electronics, Victron Energy, Victron Energy, an entire Victron Energy system that I have to install in the boat. But essentially, what we have here is a multi plus two um, charger and inverter. We have monitor, monitor connections, uh, battery protector. Um, galvanic isolators, cable for the solar panels, and all of the pieces that we need. So the good thing with this is that I can actually start working on the electronics of the boat, which means that I can finish that. I think it will be like a maybe a couple of days. And with all the electronics connected, we are nearly there actually. There's no much more other than aesthetical things that I have to fix like some of the windows are still uh, lose like one drop of water every time it rains. I need to fix that. But the main things, the big things are done. Um, I will show you later. I did all the connections of the batteries and I actually added Victron's uh, Bluetooth uh, connections to it. So now I can see the voltage and everything on the app. So all of that will be connected to the same system and everything will be visible in this monitor here. So. The idea is that the navigation table is the brains of the boat, and everything will be um, will be in there, and I can you know manage the entire the entire boat from there. But also, also I can manage the boat remotely. So I'm really happy for this. I will show you guys step by step how how we do this, um, how all the connections are done, and uh, and the cables. Oh my God, the cables! The things with the cables is absolutely. I actually had to recognize my limits and call my brother and ask for help trying to understand what the hell 
is the you know the size of the cables that I needed. You, you need to go online. You need to, you, there is a, like a table for it, and then you have you know your distance from the source to the to the device and the amount of amperes, and then you will get whatever, man. I just called my brother and said, like, "Hey, dude, help me." And you know, sure thing. He knew exactly how to do it and exactly how how it worked, and he explained it to me. I didn't understood it, so he essentially told me at the end, like, "Yeah, you need this," <laughs> and I bought the cables, which are. Um, for the whole, all the connections will be with 35 uh, square mi millimeters and then I need, uh, no, 50 square millimeters and then I need 75 square millimeters for the um, alternator to the battery, so the main battery to the um, engine battery and yeah, the cables was, and it's amazing how expensive they are, like wow, all of this is being incredibly expensive. But, you know, it's for the dream, so we do it. So, yeah, I will connect now um, everything on the boat because I was out for one day, so um, I disconnect the electronics and everything, the, the, you know, short power and all of that, and I bring in also Starlink, so I will reconnect everything and we will start working, yeah. Uh, just, just a quick video just to remind you always check your female male connections and where do they go because uh, it's painful just to say it I rooted what like 70 cables okay from everywhere you know going from there all the way to here going from outside all the way it's like 70 cables and of course when you finalize routing all of them i am like cool i'm done so you know your cushions are back your you know all the wood covers are back everything you just put everything back together because what you need to do now is just connect the pieces yeah one cable, one Mimia 2000, which by the way is a huge pain in the butt because you need to root it from the aft cabin under that seat, but that seat doesn't have a way to actually see in it, so you need to go, you know, with your hand. This is it's a freaking nightmare. That one cable that brings all Mimia network to the aft system. I rooted on the contrary. So the female is where the male should be, and the male is where the female should be. <laughs> ah! I don't want to root that one again, really. Oh my god. You know, only for, for that mistake, I need to undone the radio unscrew the electrical panel unscrew the second one because that's where my hand goes trying to grab that cable I need to undo all of this go all the way to the back and yeah <laughs> hey I'm not complaining this is way better than being at, at the office working <laughs> for example but Oh my god, I need to redo all of that. So, yeah, let's get to it. Was it as small, as smooth as I thought it would be? No, but it worked. So now, this is in the right sense. So I can connect this to my Nimia 2000 network 
main network. This is like the main part of it. And have, yes, it connects because it will not be the first time in my life that I route a cable for the second time in the wrong way. That's, that's not the first time it happens. And it's weird that this, this time I actually did it right. But yeah, so here you go. My network is there. I, I, I really need to not lose this one. Every Nimia network, you will have two of these. These are the terminals and goes, you need to be sure to only have two. And they are the ones that actually finalize the network. And, and you know, at the beginning, at the end of it, that's where the, and you need to have these resistors that finalize that. If you lose that, you need to buy another one and essentially cost the same of a nut. It's like 60 bucks or something like that. So quite expensive for what it is, better to not lose it. So this is rooted again. I can move ahead. Nice. I have to, I have to figure this out because these are not the ones that are going to use the, the gray ones. I'm going to use these ones. So I will have everything, the same brand, same quality, hopefully same durability. But these are three-way connectors, but they don't actually give you three uh, access. You only have one. When you add this to the network, when you add it to the network, one is occupied by the network itself, one goes to your sensor, and the other one will be occupied by the next one. So it, it's not three, it's one. The wind sensor on the, on the top of the mast, for what I wrote, he can be a terminal, meaning that he do the function of this little guy. If that's true, I, I, I still don't have it here. That's something that I'm going to be doing in like two weeks. Um, if that's true, I only need two nuts to add here, one from uh, to you know for these two two cables that already exist, and the, the the wind sensor will be connected at the end and will be doing the terminal part of the network. Otherwise, I will need to use a third one. But if that's true, I am one terminal short for the aft configuration. So hopefully, hopefully it's true what I wrote. Or if you know, if, if any of you know it, if you can write it on down here on the, on the comments, um, my terminal is a, the, the wind sensor I bought is a Furuno one. So if you know if, if it actually works as a terminal, please let me know. Otherwise I need to know if I, if I need to order this. This actually comes fairly fast, but it still is like a week to get them. So, you know, it's a week, more than a week less every time. That will be really helpful. Anyhow, gotta put this in. Hey guys, so thank you for watching. Um, if you have any information of what I asked during this video, please let me know. It really helps me when, when people uh, comment, like uh, on the past video, a guy from, I don't know when, where he was from, but he actually knew how to dismantle the portholes and it was absolutely uh, a help for me. Um, so keeping that in mind, I was thinking about uh, doing this. At the end of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do next week. Um, and if any of you have information about that, please help me with that. So. I have the SSB um, radio that I need to install, which I need to know which cable to use as an antenna from, you know, to put, you know, on top of the mast and all the way down and then to the, to the um, automatic uh, synthesizer, equalizer, tuner, automatic tuner. Um, I don't know which, which cable uh, or what type of cable it is. So if you guys know, please, please let me know so I can buy it. Um, the other thing that I need to do is to install um, the SSB radio and the IES system. They are both from ICOM and both of them uh, come with a GPS antenna. The thing is that the chart plotter has an antenna too, a uh, GPS antenna too. So I want to, what I need to understand if, is that if I can fit the GPS data directly from the NMEA 2000 network and have 
the chart plotter being the GPS antenna for everyone, or I need to have a GPS antenna for each of these systems. Um, if that's the case, I need to do a lot of work on the back of the boat to, to bring all of those cables outside, so I need to know that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you, if you guys know, is that you know those little GPS antennas that um, that you connect, like they also sell like USBs uh, connection of them, or you have a co coaxial coaxial um, cable, really small, so like plastic like this. Do they work inside, or I need to have them outside of the boat? Um, exposed to the to the outside. Uh, I don't know because I need to root one of those for the Raspberry Pi but um, I don't want to have to do like a hole or anything just for that single piece. So if you guys know please let me know and yeah thank you for watching.